Uh, thank you, Avi. Uh, so I'm going to talk about PCPs a little bit, but before we get into that, let's see some background, uh, which is the three set problem. So I give you a three set formula, phi, which is basically uh, an end over clauses of size uh, three. And I ask you, is this formula satisfiable or not? Okay, so we think about it as a computational problem. I give you phi, and I ask you, is there such x? And I want you to find me such x efficiently, if possible. So it turns out that this, this problem po can, cannot be efficiently solved, at least uh, we conjecture so. Uh, but as a support for this, for, for this claim, we have the following theorem, which is the Cook Levin theorem. Stating that 3 sat is uh, NP hard. And uh, don't worry about the, what specifically NP hard means. For us, it will basically be uh, infeasible. Inefficient time. Uh, okay, so uh, why am I telling you about this? So, following this theorem in the 70s and 80s, many people uh, proved that other combinatorial problems are also infeasible to solve, including uh, combinatorial problems such as click, uh, vertex cover, max cut. Uh, and many, many other more problems. Uh, but one can ask a more refined question. Can we approximate solution to such problems? Uh, and it turns out that the answer here is still we can do it, at least in some cases. But to prove it, you need a vast strengthening of this theorem, which is the PCP theorem. So here is the PCP theorem. It states that if I give you, again, a three sat formula, but now I make you a promise that either phi is satisfiable or you can satisfy at most 99% of the clauses. and ask you to tell me which one of these cases does the given formula belong to. This is still NP hard. Okay. So the theorem says in a sense that it's hard to approximate the number of clauses that you can satisfy by this ratio between one, which is satisfiable, and 99%. Okay? And given this theorem, you can uh, prove hardness of approximation results for several problems. I'll give you just one example, which we'll care about in this talk. So example. Uh, the chromatic number. So here is the problem. I give you a graph, which is basically a set of vertices and connections between them. And I ask you to color these vertices in the least number of colors 
such as there is non monochromatic edge. So let's look at this graph. So for example, I can color this vertex red, but now I cannot use red for here because there would be a monochromatic edge. Let's see, I can put red here and here. And the other two vertices, I can pick another color. So this is a two color graph. So what is the problem? I give you a graph and I ask you, please compute the chromatic number of this graph. And we denote it by chi of t. Okay, so here is a theorem. Uh, for every c greater than zero, there exists some k such that if I give you g, promised uh, to be of a chromatic number at most k or chromatic number at least c times k then yeah sorry uh, so uh, this is NPR total Okay, so this says that if we take C to be large, say 100 or 1,000, then approximate the, the chromatic number within this factor is npr But typically, when you take this C to be large, K is also large. So in both cases, the chromatic number is potentially large. So this is a simple question, which we don't know how to answer. So from now on, we'll assume that we have a graph that it's free colorable. And what we want to do is color it with the least number of colors. <coughs> Efficiently, of course. So what do we know about this? So we have some algorithms. And so we have some hardness results. Uh, so let's see what do we know. So in the 70s, CARP proved that it's hard to do with three colors. About 20 years after that, Kana, Linear, and Safra proved that it's hard to four color. Sorry? From now on, hard means NPR. Yeah, precisely. So they proved that it's hard to four color. And 20 years after that, which is this year, uh, in a work that is still unpublished, Crokin uh, proved that it's hard to do with five. Okay, so we have a steady progress, one color every 20 years. 
and uh, what about algorithms? Uh, well, the first uh, uh, non-trivial algorithm was given by Avi. And you would probably expect some uh, number, right? Uh, but no, it uses square root of n colors, where n is the number of vertices. So coloring something with n colors is clear, but this is less than that. And uh, all I'm going to say some more results, but they are all still stuck in polynomial factors in n. So what exactly do we mean by O period n? Is that worst case or average? Worst case. Uh, yeah. Precisely. Uh, following that, Karger, Motwani, and Sudan, they improved it to O of n to the 3 over 14. Uh, this was further improved by Klamtak. to a bit more than 0 0.2. I, I actually haven't understood the problem. I mean, given that it was three colorable in the three case, yeah. in the general case, you're given a what? No, I, I, I'll give you a three colorable graph. Oh. But I've asked you to find oh, the coloring efficiently. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you asked for six. <laughs> okay. You're not asking for something. Yeah, yeah, I'm asking for something very, yeah. very relaxed. Uh, in the recent, uh, so last year it was improved again to by Thorop, and uh, this guy so at some point how do you use that as three colors? how do you use that? So, so some of these algorithms are, uh, so for example, the Wigdorsen algorithm, what does it do? It looks at the one vertex and looks at its neighborhood. And it chooses it in the following uh, sense. This vertex should get one color. So its neighborhood should be two colorable because the graph is three colorable. And two colorable we can do efficiently. So this is one way. Uh, okay, so you're applying the color. Yeah, all right, so let's see what's on there. Okay, thank you. Sure. That's where it's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Thorop and uh, Karayashi, they improved it uh, to a little bit below and to the point two. Uh, and this is the best that we know today. So we know that you can not do it with five, and you cannot you can do it by with slightly less than n to the point two. And uh, clearly, there is a huge gap. So, what is the uh, what is the true answer? Um, so, if one is willing to assume stronger assumptions, better than uh, p not equal to np, you can get something much better than five. Uh, so, the normal and regev. Uh, they prove the following theorem, <laughs> assuming uh, strictly speaking a variant of UGC, uh, uh, NP-hard, <laughs> uh, I'll define it in a second. It's NP-hard to color with constantly many colors. Okay. So this is, again, not, not matching the algorithms, but it's better than five. Uh, so what is unique and conjectural and why am I talking about this problem? So I don't want to define things precisely, but roughly speaking, it is the following problem. So, so this is called true to gend. Uh, 
I give you a set of variables and a set of equations. And each equation is of the following form. Xi minus Xj is equal to either B or B prime. And arithmetic is over some finite field. And I ask you how many of these equations can you satisfy? So the conjecture says, if I give you such system, it's NPR to, to tell me if it's fully satisfiable or at most 1% satisfiable. And uh, the last thing that I'd like to say that this conjecture is by now almost a theorem. Uh, so recently, uh, we're involved in proving that this conjecture is true if you are willing to put here 99%. So distinguish it between something that is almost satisfiable and uh, nowhere near satisfiable, this is NP hard. But for this theorem, uh, you really need the, the full satisfiability. Okay, that's it.